I'm Mark Sanford. I come from the coast of South Carolina where we get storms that hit in the late summer. And I'm here to say that there's a big storm coming. A big storm coming, a warning of sorts in our 2020 lead. Former Republican Governor and Congressman Mark Sanford is mulling a possible run against President Trump in the Republican primaries and delivering that message as he prepares to head to the early voting state of New Hampshire later today. And Governor Sanford joins me now from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Uh, Governor, you leave for New Hampshire in just a few hours. Uh, you don't have any public events. You have some private meetings. What's going to be the deciding factor as to whether or not you actually challenge President Trump? The continued input of people, whether up that way, which will be a different perspective, uh, or the perspective of a lot of folks that I've talked to here along the coast of South Carolina and across the state, which I represented, obviously, for eight years of my life as former governor. Um, and, and former White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci uh, this week called for replacing President Trump on the Republican ticket. President Trump responded by attacking his former White House Communications Director on Twitter and also on the tarmac today. T take a listen to a, a little bit of it. I think Anthony is really somebody that's very much out of control and he doesn't have what it takes. Calling Scaramucci there out of control, saying he doesn't have what it takes. Do you think Republicans would really be willing to back a challenger to an incumbent president? Well, let's be clear. This hadn't happened in a long time. It, it was the uh, more than 100 years ago, the 21st president was the, the first guy not to get the nomination of his party. So I'm um, Chester Arthur, of all, of all folks. But, but what I do think is important is a conversation, and you just don't know where it leads. And the people that have been encouraging me to do this have said, we need to have a conversation about what it means to be a Republican, because the bent that we've been moving toward here of late is not consistent with the, the, the values and the ideals that they've believed in for a very long time. One of those values, of course, is fiscal responsibility. The deficit is up 27 percent from uh, last year. The White House Office of Management and Budget predicts the deficit is going to exceed $1 trillion, $1 trillion this year. You tweeted that the budget deal the president just signed was, quote, moving our country toward becoming a financial S-hole. Do you think Republicans, whether it's Republican voters or Republicans in Congress, do you think they actually care about fiscal responsibility or is this just posturing for years and years? Because we're not really seeing much evidence of it. Well, no, because, again, there's a disconnect between people at the elected level and what I've consistently heard over my 25 years in politics at the grassroots level. And so that, that small business person trying to keep their business afloat cares very much about the numbers. And the, the family struggling to make it sitting there at the kitchen counter trying to balance its family checkbook very much cares about the numbers. And, and so I think at a grassroots level, this issue is real. People are disturbed by the fact that we have unprecedented levels of debt, unprecedented levels of deficit, and the highest spending on record. And this is, mind you, in a peacetime and benign economic environment. So I think that the issue is real, but it needs to be talked about. And what we've had is the three monkeys routine, wherein I see no evil, I hear no evil, I speak no evil, by both Republicans and Democrats on the issue of spending and debt. When you talk about how voters, you talk to Republican voters, say that this party uh, is steering away from the Republican values that you're used to. Obviously, you're not only talking about fiscal responsibility. I imagine you're also talking about the tone and tenor of things that President Trump uh, says. Uh, he seems to be embracing a campaign strategy, strategy, at least partly based on dividing people, whether it's attacking uh, the four congresswomen, telling them to go back where they came from, even though uh, three of them were born in the United States and all four are American citizens, the attacks on Elijah Cummings, the attacks on Baltimore. Uh, now we see some very aggressive steps when it comes to uh, even um, trying to dissuade legal immigration. Uh, how do you view all of that? I, I think that to be conservative is to have trust in institutions that are all about balancing power in our political system. I think that to be conservative is to have a measure of conservatism in the way that you approach others, a, a humbleness of heart. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to be meek, uh, but, but it does mean you don't pretend to be the bully in the local schoolyard. And, and what I'm hearing from folks here, at least on the coast of South Carolina where I come from, is a level of weariness 
with the, you know, the bully in the schoolyard routine. And you saw it in, in, frankly, my own congressional election, where in, for the first time in about 50 years, the seat went Democrat. And much of it was based on soccer moms and, and young millennials saying, this is just inconsistent with the message that my parents were, were, were giving me over the years or inconsistent with the message I've been trying to give my kids. So I think that something is afoot both on the financial front and, frankly, on the tone and tenor front.